After a rough 2014, Amazon stock has been on a tear. It's up about 20% so far this year. So the question now, is there more room to run? Well, joining us now to break all of that down in terms of Amazon is RJ Hadavi. He's uh, an analyst at Morningstar. RJ, your point, you point out a few things that uh, Amazon is doing right. So let's start with fulfillment. You can point out the benefits of maintaining its fulfillment network as opposed to physical retail presence. Yeah, I think that's a, a key thing we've seen the last two holiday seasons is a lot of retailers have put their emphasis on, on price matching when Amazon has still been taking share from a lot of these retailers. And to us, that suggests that the purchase decision for a lot of consumers has shifted away from necessarily pricing to expedited shipping. That's also become a very key consideration. Uh, you know, looking at Amazon's fulfillment centers, uh, the technology that they have there, the same and next day delivery capabilities, as well as these sortation centers the company's been building, which are locations placed on the outskirts of major urban markets to facilitate uh, expedited shipping and, and bypass the traditional parcel service. Uh, I think that puts them in a very strong competitive advantage uh, across even a wider number of products than, than any traditional retailer can match. The other benefit it has is it, it draws in a lot of third-party sellers, which is very margin accretive to the business. And RJ, just to follow up on that, I, I visited facilities over the holidays, UPS, FedEx, Postal Service, all three just covered in Amazon boxes. It was amazing how much was being shipped out for the holiday season. Uh, but moving forward in your recent note, you wrote that you remain optimistic that Amazon can exceed 4% operating margins by 2019. Uh, what's driving this outlook? Yeah, there, there's really three building blocks behind that. One is a uh, starting point is Amazon Prime. I think if you look at the membership uh, fees that go along with that, as well as the incremental revenue that comes in, and also parse out the incremental costs that, that are tied to Amazon Prime, we find that it's actually a, a very profitable business. Right now, we feel that with most Prime members, you're making back that membership fee, that $99 membership fee in actual operating profit. Unfortunately, some of that benefit's been masked by other investments in the business, whether it be technology, content, or fulfillment centers at this point. But as the company acquires more and more uh, Prime members, and we estimate today that there are about 35 million members globally, uh, and that number is going to continue to go up with a lot of the creative partnerships they have in that, uh, we feel that not only is that you know, potentially margin accretive, but also blocks out uh, potential competitors. There's a psychological aspect to, to Amazon Prime, where once you've locked in that membership fee for the year, feel compelled to use it and keep within uh, Amazon's ecosystem. And now there's a study done by Consumer Intelligence Research that says that Prime members use its video service as much as Netflix subscribers use Netflix. So how does this impact their bottom line? Yeah, I think that's also something that uh, you know, it really drives it in two ways. I think one is that you know having the, the the digital content library that's out there has really helped to draw in potentially a wider base of users. There's also some cross-selling opportunities as well. As you come in as a Prime member for, for general merchandise, you potentially look more and more to the, uh, the free content, which then, uh, as you get a, uh, experience with the platform, then you, you buy some of the, uh, the, the actual purchase content, the, 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 the content for sale on that. And I think that's creative on there, too. Um, but I also think that it also proves that you know, it's more than just the membership fee model that, uh, you know, say, like a Costco has. It's not just that that's what's going to be driving profits going forward. There are other ways to take this. It's more of a Costco plus model where you get you know, a lot of your profit on the membership fees, but the company certainly has other things like digital content, Amazon Web Services to drive profitability longer term. And given the fact that Amazon has its fingers in so many pies, I mean, Prime, uh, you know, e-commerce delivery. There's just so many things you can talk about with Amazon. What's the key takeaway for investors? I mean, is this stock a buy? Yeah, I think that you, we've seen really the last quarter, uh, a quarter or two, I think the company, uh, especially coming on the heels of the, uh, the failure that they had in the Fire Phone, I think the company's really taken a step back and, and refocused itself on its core e-commerce and AWS businesses, which is a good thing for investors. And I think that that supports a longer-term uh, margin goal for us, at least in the, the mid-single-digit range. Right now, we have a fair value estimate of $400 per share. Again, that's predicated on the company getting to about 4% margins over the next five years, which if you look at North America, American margins uh, this past quarter, uh, you know, that, that, that seems like it's a pretty reasonable assumption there. Uh, so at $372 right now, uh, looks like a little bit of upside from here, uh, and, and we think it's pretty uh, worth a look at this point. Well, RJ, thanks for joining us. Thanks for breaking this big company down. Thank you for watching. I'm Morgan Brennan. Have a great day. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Dowdy from CNBC. Thank you so much for checking out our channel. You can subscribe by clicking right here to check out the latest Mad Money CEO interviews, market news, financial advice, and product unboxing. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.